My lineage shall live on. And we are now going to the fabled land of Purwajit. Whatever that is. So we need a population... Forget that guy. Just going to talk over him. Population of 600, 10 modest homesteads. Another type we haven't come encountered. And we need to fill a granary with figs. Farming along the Nile. Oh boy. So this is what it's all about in this game. You must build farms directly along the floodplain in order to gain the benefits of its increased fertility. Unlike most working structures, farms in the floodplain do not need direct access to employees, but do instead need a workforce of peasant labourers supplied by working camps. So the way this works is you place down one of these buildings, uh, who then seeks employment from these houses, uh, and whenever the floodplains are out, and the flood has sort of receded and refertilized land. Uh, people from this working camp will come out and do what this guy's doing. Whatever it is. Sweet. And that will happen on a yearly ba basis that the flood inundation will revitalize itself. And we get some more fertility and we get more food. Oh look, hippos. Dangerous creatures, hippos. They kill you as soon as look at you. If they can reach you. And don't ever stand behind one because they, th the way they defecate, it's literally projectile shitting. I'm not joking. That's how they. And the other thing is, is that they projectile shit, but they also use their tail, at like a like a, a rotor blade, to fling it everywhere. And it's like to mark territory. But fucking hell, if that's not disgusting. <laughs> but you know, when in Rome. So we're just going to start off by sort of laying down some foundations for buildings. And I again, I just sort of pick a spot and start placing, you know, uh, what's this called? Road down. I almost forgot what it was called. So this time round, you may notice there's no gold in this map. So we're going to have to come up with another way of uh, generating funds when we eventually and inevitably run out. But for the most part, let's just uh, not worry about that for the moment. So we're going to get some housing. I'm going to get some water supply. Where do we want to build it? Let's build it... There! And... Build... Yeah, I know, I know. I'm working on it. Patience. Young paddy one. I tend to like alternating like this because you leave gaps in which you can build booths and such. Like that. It also looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Except when you do that and you fuck up the pattern. But you know what? As I said, not I mean I'm not into symmetrical building. So these guys are gonna move in. We're gonna need food now. So for that, in this case, we are going to need a work camp. And also, again, you'll notice I'm going to do that so this guy doesn't wander off too far down the road. Like that. So we're isolating. Isolating the community. Within our own little uh, I guess it's like a village at this point. Ooh, listen to the music, it's gone all... Celestial. Ooh. Ooh. So we're going to build it away because people don't like this building in particular being near them. Can I build a farm? So that guy's going to start uh, seeking out employees. We're going to start building some fig farms! Like this. And again, it's just going to spam my log with... This building needs road access! Uh, and I'm just going to ignore it as I sort of work on my grand design of sort of the most optimal way of um, filling out this space, and it's probably going to be dreadful. Uh, I don't, just don't think I'll be able to fit one so like that. God, sometimes this can get agonizing, just like deliberating. Ah, fuck everything! I can't get in there. Because there's, there's this, this corner. Corners! They're a bane. Uh, fuck. Well, that ruins everything, doesn't it? Oh, and there goes the... Alright. Oh, <laughs> no food for us for a while! It will come back. But the reason why it's so imperative to build so many farms is because there's going to be a period where you're not going to be getting any food at all. I.e. this period. This guy's still looking for employees? Holy shit. Okay, well, let's move that. Fill that in. And let's broaden this out to about here, and then fill in like that, so we can get some more, more peeps, more peeps. Hmm. Guess in the meantime we can make a temple. 
Oh, and there's... It would be that one building, the one that's most important at this point in time. Bloody typical. So, oh, yeah, and, yeah, just as, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, take two, workers camp. Let's just put it there because I can't be bothered. Um, and let's just start building this out like this. You build the farms, and you build the roads, and then you get the money. You know, build some here. We can build it like that, I guess. It's not too bad. The same amount in the same sort of space. Uh, that one's going to need a fucking road. Build another fig farm there, and another one there. I think that'll do for now. Because our population is quite low at this point, we don't need to go ballistic on it so much. Uh, okay, that's good. Alright, so those guys are going to start growing the figs. Can you imagine just only subsiding on a, a diet of figs? God, I think that'll get depressing after a while. Uh, so, naturally, if, you, if, you suppl if your supply and demand is inconsistent, you want to have as many granaries as you possibly can so that when the flood comes in, you can cash in and you can stock as much as possible. So, I'm going to build two granaries. Uh, to start with, I mean, that's not ideal because, yeah, that's, I can't move it because that's going to cost money. All right, that's fine. Yeah, whatever. You know what? Fuck you guys. Didn't want you anyway. Um, and we're just going to place, I think, on there. And another architect's post there, because we don't want any more accidents. Uh, police station. Where do we want to put this? Again, people don't really like it being near them. Let's put it there for the moment. Uh, let's build a temple to Osiris, who is the current patron of these people. Basically like a temple to me. <laughs> Let's build a shrine over there. For the people who are too lazy to go to church, effectively. They can go and stand in front of the shrine and look solemn for a bit and then feel, you know, complete for the rest of the day. I think that's how it works anyway. Hmm. Let's build some more housing. Because I can. Oh, these guys are probably going to need... Oh, no, they're fine. Look at that. I know our food levels are low. Luckily, people won't starve for some reason. Like, like these guys, they, they will subsist on water, I guess. Speaking of, we should probably put another one of these down here. So, eventually, when we start doing this and expanding out, we can cover them. Cover them in, in glory and in water. I'm just going to throw water at them. Seems like the most uh, efficient way of distributing fluids. Alright. Uh, build another road connector like that, I guess. It's fine, I think. So, these guys are just going to sort of gather the food. As you can see at this point, I think... Yeah, okay, and here it comes. Look at them. Look at those figs go. Look at them go. Look at them go. It's go, go, go! How are we doing on the uh, structures? Fine. Fire is alright. Okay, so this is the introduction of sickness. Which is always great in these sort of games. Your city suffers from health problems, as is to be expected with a growing population. Malaria and disease are the most common health crime uh, crises that will affect your city's households. Malaria and disease. Disease is the most common crises. You don't say. Not depression. Not at this point. No, we've got real we've got real diseases here. Malaria. Okay, so we've got an instance of malaria. Let me just toggle off of that. So, sanitation. No, not defensive structures. Don't know what happened just there. Uh, we're going to need an apothecary. Oh god, it's introducing industry to us as well. <sighs> now that you've given your people basic food and water, you can enhance their lifestyle with other goods such as pottery. So again, if we just scroll down, the image demonstrates everything. We don't really need to read that, because I remember from my brainicles, my memories. So, here we got here, the, the clay pit. And this dude's going to bring clay that's mined to the potter here, who's then going to turn it into pottery. He will take it to the storage yard, 
And then this lady who you remember from the bazaar, the kind lady, what, what was she called? Claudia Patra, I think. <laughs> Claudia Patra here, lovely lady. She's going to take the pots and then sell them on with this girl, her daughter, I guess, maybe. Um, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the pottery eventually, people. But first of all, you know, health. Can't distribute pottery to people who are dead. Yes, I know. Uh, and this is... I can't remember what this... I can't remember which of these does what. I think one of them is preventative and one of them is curative. I think this one... I think these are preventative and this one's curative. And by curative I mean they, they cure the disease and the preventative ones are the ones who prevent it happening in the first place. Alright. So this is sort of solving some unemployment for us a bit at this point. Which is always good. Uh, this well is not really very well placed, is it? <laughs> Excuse that. Uh, we'll just pretend it didn't happen. Uh, where do we want to place this? If we place it there, we can put a uh, booth there, eventually. You notice we can build a village palace yet, but we can't actually build gold mines because there's no gold. Also, these guys will just hang outside the granaries if they actually can't put it in, so that's cool, you know, food doesn't go to waste. We could also, I guess, do this. Uh, do we? Oh, we don't actually have a bazaar. I've just realised. Oh god. Um, where the fuck to put it? Uh, let's put. It, I don't really like putting things on the outskirts because it looks kind of like like you forgot, I guess. Um, so let's put it like that. All right. Cool. So we've got one there and one there. That's, that's you know, that's fairly efficient, I think. So, moving on, we need to build... We need to start producing pottery for when these guys eventually get into the cottage stage. Actually, let's first get some jugglers down. Get some, uh... Get some jugglers on the go. Uh, where do we want to put this? Let's put it there, because we're not going to be able to build another granary there. Uh, and let's build some booths for the amusement of the people's... I left some sort of key points for uh, this stuff, like that. Get another one. Ooh, 500 people. Lovely. Get another booth in there. The coverage wasn't amazing. I'll be honest. Okay. That should be enough booths. Enough booths. Okay. Right, so eventually, once these guys get bored with their entertainment and stuff, they're just going to want to stare at pottery all day, um, as you do. So to produce pottery, we're going to need to go to the raw materials sort of section, and we're going to need a clay pit. And clay pits can only be, be, be built next to uh, water, for obvious reasons. So that the, the soil, you need a wet soil. Uh, and you sort of want the area in which you're making sort of like your industrial sector, I guess. You want it to sort of be in one sort of cohesive area, and I'm kind of thinking about making it here. But the clay sort of gathering can be slightly separate, just not too far away. I'm going to place some clay pits like this. I'll link them up. These guys will go and find someone to work at them. Uh, if we put a shrine down, that will sort of counterbalance the... Uh, you know, the desirability effect, I guess. How are we doing on f uh, D and F? Can't remember what they're called. Like, instructional integrity and the uh, fire hazard, I guess. There's a bit of a fire hazard going over here, so let's put one down there. Alright. Cool. Because that guy's not doing his job, apparently. So these guys are going to start producing clay, but as you can see, they're stuck because... Thank you, Anku. Very, very uh, astute of you. So we're going to need a storage yard. All the clay. Let me fit how many here? I tend to like putting these things next to each other because it looks cool. Like that. Doesn't that look good? Got two storage yards now. If we link them up. These things are also prone to collapse, so we're going to put a architect's post next to it. This is this is this is the effect of experience and having done this. Like I, I played this a lot when I was younger. Like, I wouldn't say it was my most played sort of strategy game when I was younger. I think that pro probably be the first Age of Empires, but I really did like this one as well. Ah, 
So we've got some clay coming in. So they put it in that one. So what you can do is you can change what they'll accept. So obviously food, we don't accept that. Uh, I'm going to set it so that this one accepts all and it does not accept clay. So that pottery will go into this one. And if we go to this one and we set special orders, we can set it so that it doesn't accept pottery like that. So that clay will go in this one and pottery will go in that one. And it's very nice and neat and even. Deep and crisp and even. Speaking of, let's get some potters down. Let's get three of them, in fact. So these guys, right next to each other, right next to where they need to be. They can just start churning out the pottery goods and it'll be all good. I think we need another one of these. I'm just sort of like doing a... Oh no, no, it's just right there. God. Don't need one. Fine. Put one there. Because I feel like it. What we really need at this point is gold. We're running out already. Oh, do you see that? Look at that. Look at that weird glitch. What is going on there? Like hovering. Hovering figs. Municipal structures! You've got some industry up and running. Huzzah! Now you can think about making a few improvements to your city. Beautification can be used to make some neighborhoods more desirable, while the other municipal structures can help to run things more efficiently. So we can now create, like, plazas and gardens and statues and all sort of cool shit that'll make your place look real nice. You can also make roadblocks, which are, um, are something you can put down to stop you having to sort of, uh, you know, basically like, uh, destroy the roads to stop them wandering off. And it'll prevent certain people from um, bypassing them. We can also create water crossings, apparently. Ferries can help your, your city run more smoothly. Carefully placed water crossings let the inhabitants of your city reach the otherwise inaccessible parts of the landscape to find prey or other valuable resources. In this case, they can improve the time, time, timeliness of certain deliveries by shortening their journeys. Right. So technically we could... Well, actually, could we? I guess we could. We could build one here and get a cross over to here, but like, why would we want to? Why would we want to incite the wrath of the hippo? It's beyond madness, those. I guess if we wanted more food, we could go over there, but it seems like a risk too many. What I'm looking for, though, is not here. <laughs> oh, listen to that music. This one's to fucking go into town or whatever that is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not too clued up on my ethnic uh, instruments. I know what a doo-duke is, though. Modest homestead. Is that what we're looking for? Do we need modest homestead? Ten modest homesteads. A population of how many? Six hundred. Cool. Alright, we need to beautify a bit. We can create a large statue. This is going to indebt us, but who cares? You know, we get a huge statue out of it. Let's put it there. We're out of money. It's going to give us another four thousand because it's really nice like that. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I love this track. It's just fucking so jazzy. Oh, it's great. Love it. Uh, so we can play some statues where people need them, I guess, or want them. We can also play gardens, and the gardens are quite interesting because you've got small ones like this but then if you make them bigger they get well they, they get bigger I guess so you can make really big gardens like uh, let's do one like that look at that look at that we've got like a fucking, fucking gazebo for people oh but if you do that it'll change it again uh, so we can do this we can get a garden there people fucking love this stuff look at them it's going berserk you can create some really nice looking cities this way look at it look look it's f amazing what a few little gardens will do Look at them. They're just going berserk. Look at all the upgrades. We've got upgrades for days. And gardens for days as well. God, can you imagine being the poor groundskeeper for this place? Look at that. This is our city. It's fucking brilliant, isn't it? 1,000 people now call your city home. Osiris III. So yes, this is the third of our dynasty. And we win! We win! Victory! Uh, we can continue governing, governing for a few more years, but I, I want to proceed. I want more challenge! More! 
Your own citizens are beginning to look to you as their caretaker, and neighboring cities also hail you as a provider in times of need. Yes, my children, I am a benevolent god king. Look up to me, praise me, wash my feet occasionally, and I shall provide you with pottery and figs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fairly, fairly good deal, really.